Dave, as I look at the physical world and try to contemplate you know, what existence is all about, you see science making progress. Uh, the discoveries of relativity and quantum mechanics are remarkable extensions of physical laws. A lot of people think that maybe we're finished with that, but some would say that there's much more to physical law to understand. Uh, take quantum mechanics. Where are we on that, and how can you, as a philosopher who has specialized in consciousness, reflect on it? Well, quantum mechanics is wonderful for a philosopher because it's given us a whole new philosophical mystery just in the last hundred years or so. You know, what is existence? How can we know about it? What's consciousness? How on earth does quantum mechanics make sense? You know, physics has discovered there is this wave function out there, and the world is all constituted by this giant smeared out quantum mechanical wave function which every now and then goes into a definite state and produces the classical reality that we see around us. And How on earth does that work? You know, it looks like from the quantum mechanical wave function everything is smeared out. You and I ought to be smeared out too. Probabilistically. Yeah. So there's only a probability that we're sitting here that exactly. we might be sitting over and there. Half of me is way over there mm -hmm. and I have to be a giant wave function. But I'm not. How does that work? You know, traditionally in quantum mechanics, people have talked about the collapse of the wave function. Every now and then, that smeared out wave function collapses. So it takes on a definite state. So I'm here and you're there. But how, how does that happen and why? Nope, they say it collapses happen with measurements. What's a measurement? Measurement looks like that's intervention of a conscious observer. But physics, is that going to start dealing in consciousness and conscious observers? A lot of physicists want to reject that idea. I mean, I've got some sympathy to this idea. It goes back to people like the physicist Wigner, who thought that maybe actually what collapses the wave function is the intervention of consciousness. But done that way, that means that quantum mechanics, actually physics, has to be expanded on its own terms to bring in consciousness to make sense. Now, as a philosopher interested in consciousness, I like this idea, but I think it's, it makes a lot of physicists really quite uncomfortable. Now, there's some other interpretations of quantum mechanics. Yeah. So, I mean, another alternative is you say, okay, it was never really all that smeared out in the first place. So when some physicists think that at the fundamental level there's a big wave function, in fact, no, that's not all there is. There's actually hidden variables. There are particles underneath the wave function, and those are the ultimate reality. It's a classical picture, basically with billiard balls underneath that big probabilistic wave. And we don't, they're not revealed to us directly, what we have most access to is the wave, but there really are the particles down there. And it's because those particles are in the position that they're in that we get, you know, that you and me are now in the positions that we're in. And that's so it's classical all the way down. The only trouble is it makes the physics very ugly. <laughs> well, but it particles all the way down, but those particles may have some very strange properties. Very strange behavior. They're still governed by this wave function. Things have to go just right. People talk about the pilot wave that moves all these particles around. Most physicists don't like this because it's so complicated. They say, we want our physics to be simple. This is too complex. But it is a way to make sense of things, and it's at least philosophically maybe the least strange of all the options. It's actually the closest. If you want to return from quantum mechanics to Newton, to the billiard ball universe, that's the way to go. Now, there's a third alternative that many people find attractive, the multi-world hypothesis. Uh, Everett uh, Wheeler has been involved in that. Well, the third possibility is basically that at the bottom level, things are smeared out in a quantum mechanical wave function, and at the top level, they are too. <laughs> How can that be? I'm here, and you're there. But on this view, this is just either an illusion, or at least it's only one little bit of the world. In macroscopic level, reality, you and I are both giant smeared out quantum mechanical wave functions too. So there's a bit of the wave function where I'm here, there's a bit of the wave function where I'm here, a bit of the wave function where I'm over here. And they all exist. They all exist. Now the interesting thing is, well, why do I have the experience of a discrete reality? Well, I'm just one little bit of the wave function. Maybe my brain is in a superposed state, corresponding to a number of different states of consciousness. I'm just one bit of the wave function. So I experience this, but there's a counterpart consciousness corresponding to a counterpart brain state where I'm over there, one where I'm over there. Every time that you know the quantum dice get rolled, you know, different beings might spring different branches might spring into existence. Schrodinger's cat is both alive and dead. So do you use the datum of consciousness, which you have argued is fundamental in the universe, 
as a selector in terms of the possible explanations of quantum mechanics? I'm especially interested in how theories of consciousness might interact with these theories of quantum mechanics. I mean, for some versions of quantum mechanics, it makes no difference. For the Bohm theory, where there's just particles all the way down, maybe you don't really need consciousness there. For the collapse theory, on the other hand, where the, where the wave function collapses every now and then, it looks like consciousness could potentially play a really crucial role here as a thing that triggers collapse. Maybe there's a fundamental law of nature that says when consciousness goes into a certain state, when it threatens to become superposed, ah, that can't happen. So it collapses the wave function around it. So if that's the case, you are now introducing consciousness as some new element in the physical world or, or the natural world. Certainly you're not introducing some immortal soul or some god intervention. Consciousness is a natural phenomenon. I'm conscious, you're conscious. It's a fundamental fact of our existence. So I think our scientific theories ought to acknowledge it. One of the basic mysteries of consciousness and science is how does consciousness fit in to the natural order, if indeed it's a natural phenomenon. You could think of quantum mechanics here as offering a really interesting hypothesis, one that we couldn't have entertained before about 100 years ago, which is here is, what con here is the role of consciousness in the physical world. It collapses the wave function, makes the indefinite definite. So you are, in a sense, adding consciousness to the physical world, or, or maybe the better term that you use is the natural world. And so you're expanding our sense of the natural world because you don't need any non-natural persons like gods or angels or beings to, to make this work. No gods here, no spirits, no spooks, just <laughs> consciousness, a natural phenomenon. And on this picture, it's being brought into the picture, A, because we have reason to believe in it, that we're conscious, and B, because, hey, we need it to make the physics work. If you take the line that wave function collapses occasionally for these reasons, why does it happen? Here's a really natural hypothesis. Here's why it happens, because of consciousness. We have reason to believe in it. We want to find a role for it to play. It's a very natural hypothesis. Not the only hypothesis, but a very natural hypothesis that integrates natural consciousness with natural world. I'm still slightly troubled, maybe I shouldn't be, by the difference, if there is one, between naturalism and physical world. Are they synonymous? Or is naturalism a, 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 a superset and the physical world's part of that? Or, 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 or is it all mushed together? Well, you can use the words how you want. But if you want to draw a distinction, let's say, you know, physicalism is the view that all there is is atoms in the void, so to speak. There's space and time and particles of mass and charge and maybe a wave function over them. And naturalism, on the other hand, is a broader thesis. It's the world is ultimately simple. Complexity is generated by simple entities obeying simple laws. And what this, this case shows us is those two things can come apart. Maybe we have reasons to, to go beyond the physical, to go beyond atoms in the void, to include consciousness. So that's something else. But the world is still ultimately natural, still invokes simple entities, fundamental properties, obeying fundamental scientific laws. It's just that those laws have been expand, expanded now to include consciousness. So I, called, I would call this naturalism but not physicalism. Fascinating distinction because it really cuts a different channel than what is typically found, with, which is either the physical world or a theological or spiritual world in which what is introduced is uh, a, 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 a person in a technical sense with intentionality and motivation and some kind of emotion and some kind of a, a purposeful sense. Uh, your world, your natural world, doesn't have that, right? Yeah, I'm just basically taking the good scientist's attitude here. I was brought up a materialist. I believe only in what you have reasons to believe. Don't multiply entities without needing to. But you Consciousness, need, but you, you had to bring to. it in. You need Absolutely. to multiply something to go from the physical world to the na a, a yeah. broader natural world. So let's bring in a new property. I mean, Maxwell, did the same. Yeah. To explain his laws of electromagnetism, he needed to bring in charge, a new fundamental property of the world. He didn't suddenly leap out to God. So, right, okay, right. for consciousness, okay, it's a bit more, it's a slightly more radical expansion. We've brought in consciousness as a fundamental property. But this, this doesn't mean we need, need to, like, you know, sell the farm and bring in, uh, bring in spirits, angels, yeah. demons, gods, you know. Maybe those things exist, but so far, you know, as Laplace said, I have no need for that hypothesis. <laughs>
So the physical world that you have, can you embed your consciousness in the physical world so that your natural world and the physical world are synonymous? Can, can, you, can you use language without totally destroying the nature of definitions of physical world? Because that's what physicists would say, that you, you, you know, if you, if all, any phenomena that you want, if it turns out to be real, it has to be part of my world, my physical world. I admit there may be some other things, but if it's real, then it's got to be a part of that world. Well, if that's true, that's something we discovered empirically through doing science. It's not sort of an a priori principle that the only things that are real are physical. So it's only as good as your best science. Maybe someone thinks our best science says all that's real is physical. But now it looks like our best science has to bring in consciousness for at least potentially two reasons. One, to accommodate the very fact of our consciousness. We're more sure of it than of anything in our existence. And two, maybe to help explain quantum mechanics. That's a bit less clear, but you know, but maybe that if so, that gives us two converging reasons to believe in a fundamental natural consciousness and empirical reasons. I think really here, you just got to take the scientific attitude. You got to find the best theory that explains everything we have reasons to believe in. But can you be comfortable with embedding your sense of consciousness in the concept of a physical world rather than making a, a slightly new term, which is the natural world? I think consciousness is part of the natural world. And I would say that we have to expand our concept of the natural world, so it's no longer just atoms in the void. So you might say this is an expanded physical world, or you could say it's a physical and mental world. I don't care. What matters to me is that it's a natural world with expanded natural properties. Yes, the universe contains more than we might have thought originally that it contains, but it's still an ultimately natural world, scientifically investigatable and governed by natural laws.